Hi, I'm Preet and I'm a developer advocate here at Meta. Today we're going to be continuing the Emma journey that Luke and John established in the part one video. I'm going to show you how to set it all up using Meta 7 and Odd Zero. I'm not going to show you the full code setup, rather we're going to focus on getting Emma her employee credential and then using that alongside her fall protection training credential to verify her site access eligibility with a company like High Speed Telecom. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm here in Postman and I've already gotten my field services Meta 7 tenant set up. I've already gone ahead and obtained my access token. So the first thing that we want to do is go in and set up a BBS dead um, for this tenant so we can issue a BBS plus credential um, so that Emma can use the employee credential um, to do selective disclosure. So I'm going to go in and open up this and I'm going to be hitting the v1 slash dids endpoint uh, with, the, with a few things. Um, for the purposes of this demonstration we're going to be using the did key method. So I've gone ahead and put that as my method type in my params. Um, as well as in the options um, dot key type, I've put down BLS12381G2 as my key type, as this allows me to issue a BBS plus type credential. So I'm going to go ahead and press send, and that's going to go and create a um, did for me. And I'm going to go ahead and store this somewhere safe. Right, so we've got our did created that we will be uh, using to issue all of our credentials. Now we're ready to set up our issuer. Before we do that, I want to show you where all of my user data is, and that's going to be on Odd0, and Odd0 is going to be acting as the identity provider um, for this um, whole integration. So inside, if I go into my user management, under my users, you can see that I've got um, Emma over here created as a user, and Emma has a bunch of user metadata that I'm going to be using to issue my credential. Now you don't need to use, um, you, you don't need to put the user metadata right in here, it can come from a database or such, but for the purposes of this tutorial, um, I've gone ahead and put it in the user metadata. Now what we want to do before we get started on the Matter 7 side, we want to map this user metadata um, so that it appears in the ID token um, in the way that a Meta 7, uh, the Meta 7 OIDC bridge extension requires it to show up. So to do that, what I want to do is I want to create a rule that is going to map all of this user metadata um, back into um, the ID token. So what I'm going to do is go into the auth pipeline and click on rules. And I've, you probably wouldn't have any rules over here um, for Meta 7, but uh, so you can just go in and press create and then press empty rule. I've already got this Meta 7 mapping showed up, um, sh uh, created, so I can show you that um, over here. Okay, so let's go in and dissect this um, function and look at what it's doing. The first thing I'm doing over here is defining a namespace, and this essentially allows me to uniquely identify all of the fields that are going to be coming from the ID token, um, just so I can define it on my Meta 7 issuer. Um, to recognize all of these fields, right? So what I'm doing is I'm just taking this namespace, which is essentially my Meta7 tenant URL, and appending all of the um, user uh, claims to them. So it'll be fieldservices.vi.meta.global slash employee number slash given name slash family name. So that's going into our ID token, and then we're just grabbing the data um, from the user metadata, right, as you can see right over here. All right, so you want to just go in and map all of your other claims that you want to appear um, in your credential right over here. And then once you're satisfied, just go ahead and press save changes and we're good to go on the odd zero side. So now I'm just going to go back into Postman and what we're going to do now is hit this um, extension slash OIDC slash V1 slash issue, uh, issuers endpoint. And we're going to be creating our issuer over here. Now there's a bunch of things that we need to configure, so let's just dissect them down one by one. Um, on the top level, we're defining our credential, um, and this is going to just essentially give the metadata for the credential that we're issuing. The first thing that we are um, adding over here is the issuer did, and this is the did that we just created, so I've gone ahead and put that in there. So next we want to give our credential offer a meaningful name. So this is going to be a field services co-employee credential. Next, um, you want to define your contexts and you can just leave them as default. Um, we've already added one for schema.org and we're going to be using these contexts 
um, to define our claim mappings um, at the bottom over here. So the next thing is this type, and inside of it, the first thing we want is a verifiable credential to identify that this issuer um, is going to issue a, a verifiable credential. And then you want to add another type that's meaningful to the type of credential that you're issuing, and I've gone ahead and put down employee. Cool, so the next part of setting up the issuer is setting up the federated provider. The first thing that we want to put in is the URL, and you can get the URL by going to your applications and copying, going into your applications itself, and then copying the domain from here. Now, if you don't have any applications created, you can go ahead and create a single page application from the application's homepage, and you should be right where I am right now. So you wanna copy this domain, and then you wanna copy this client ID, and we're gonna put that client ID right over here. You wanna leave the scope as it is, um, open ID, profile, and email. And you want to put your client secret um, right over here, and you can get your client secret from the Odd Zero application details as well. All right, so the final thing that we need to do to set up our issuer is define the claim mappings. And this is of type array, and it takes in these objects, um, which take in two parameters, which is the OIDC claim and the JSON LD term. Now, the OIDC claim is what we have defined in our rules over here, so the namespace slash your um, feel your claim name. Um, so you want to go ahead and paste that there. And then the JSON LD term comes from our context that we have defined. Um, so make sure that um, all of these terms that you're putting in here map to one of your contexts uh, context that you have defined. All right, so a unique one that you will see in these claim mappings is this email um, claim mapping that I've done over here. And you can see that it does not match the OIDC claim um, pattern that we've used for all the others. And that's because Matter7 maps certain claims by default, and that includes email. So we don't need to define them in our rules, um, nor do we need to define them uh, fully qualified over here as well. And you can find a list of all of the default mapped claims on MatterLearn. Cool, now we are ready to create our issuer. I'm gonna go ahead and press send. And if we look at our response, we get a 201 created and we get back our ID, which means everything went well and it's all good. Um, before we go ahead and start claiming this credential, what you want to do is scroll down into your federated provider and you'll see that we are given back a callback URL. And what you want to do is just copy that callback URL and then go back into Odd Zero. And in your applications, um, under your uh, single page application, just go in and find the callback uh, allowed callback URL section, paste that URL, URL in, and then we're just gonna go ahead and press save. Cool, we're now ready to issue a credential. And the way we do that is by creating an OpenID discovery URL. So to do that, what you want to do is just start your URL with openid dot dot slash slash discovery um, and then we want to pass in the query parameter issuer with your issuer URL, and that is your tenant URL slash extension slash OIDC slash v1 slash issuers. And then we want to go back to our newly created issuer and copy that ID from that um, created issuer, and we want to paste it there. And that's your OpenID discovery URL created. Now, to be able to register it in something like the Matter Wallet, we need to um, encode that information in something like a QR code, and you can use any QR code service that you like. I happen to use um, QR server, and then I'm just gonna encode that data in a QR code. And that's your QR code created and ready to be scanned. Cool, so now I've gone ahead and set up my Meta wallet on my mobile device ready to be scanned. I'm gonna go into the scan uh, page and just go ahead and scan this QR code. And you can see that we have our credential offer for the Field Services Co. employee credential. If we press view, you can see all of the um, claims that are going to be given back to us in the form of this credential. And we can just go ahead and press proceed. And that's gonna log me in. It's gonna ask you for a username and password if you haven't previously signed in um, to your Odd Zero tenant. But for me, because I've already signed in, it went straight through into the authenticated session. And now I have a credential, and you can see that we have received a privacy enhancing credential with all of our details ready to go. 
All right, so we've got our field services uh, credential and I've done the similar, I've set up the similar assurance process and also gotten myself um, the full training certificate credential issued. Um, so you can see that and that's issued to me by advanced safety training. And this includes Emma's name as well as her level of expertise and um, her level of um, training, which is expert, um, the instructor and just other information that's related to that certificate. Cool. So now what we want to do is go in and verify these information as a verifier, right? So say in our example, we had High Speed Telecom who would want to verify Emma's employment as well as her um, full uh, protection certificate um, to be able to grant her access to the Jacksonville Point site, right? I'm switching gears. Now I am High Speed Telecom. So I've got my High Speed Telecom um, tenant oh, right over here set up. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a presentation template. Now, a presentation template allows you to define the type of, the, the way you want to ask information from the wallet holder, right? So it, asks, it allows you to define the list of issuers that you trust for issuing those certificates, um, the types of credentials you want. And if, you, if the issuers have issued a BBS credential, then it also allows you to define certain elements from the credential itself that you want. And in our case, um, both our credentials over here, field services and full protection, they both are BBS. So privacy enhancing credential, uh, when you see the tag that says privacy enhancing credential, that means that it's a BBS credential, right? So you can do selective disclosure with it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a presentation template that allows you to request these two credentials, but only certain parts of the credentials that we want. Right, so what we want to do to create our presentation template is to hit this endpoint core slash v1 slash presentations slash templates. And we're gonna, first thing that we need to do is provide it with, provide our template with a um, great name. So for me, it's just gonna be um, the Emma demo. Um, you wanna name it something much more meaningful um, that you can reference back. The next thing that you want to provide is the domain. So this is the domain of your tenant. If you've set up a custom domain, you or you may want to put your custom domain here as well. Cool. So now this entire chunk that you see down over here is our query, right? Um, and this query looks quite comprehensive, but let's just remove one of these credential queries so it's much more simpler to understand. All right. So. The first thing that we want is this, this query parameter takes in an array. And the array takes in as many queries as you want. So for our case, because we want the um, employee credential as well as the full protection training credential, we're gonna have two queries. And the first one is gonna be asking for the employee credential, right? Um, so what we've gone ahead over here and created that the type of that is query by frame. Query by frame allows you to define um, selective disclosure. Um, so you can ask for certain elements of a credential and not the whole thing. If you want to ask for the entire credential, you, you would want to put query by example over here. Cool. The next thing that we want to do is look into this qu uh, credential query where the first thing you want is to put in, give, give a reason for why you're asking this credential. I've gone in and said, um, please provide your employee credential. Uh, you also want to include these contexts. If you're, if you're asking for a BBS plus credential, you need these three contexts um, defined over here. Now, the next one following that is your type. The type array contains the first item, the first element in that array should be verifiable credential, and then followed by the credential types that you've defined in your issuers. So if I go back in and I look at my, um, the Emma employee credential, we went in and we added employee uh, the, the credential type was employee. So I've gone in and I've done just that over here. Now this credential subject field um, allows you to define all of the particular claims that you want from the credential. So if you recall in our actual credential, we had um, all of these claims. So we had their, um, the employee identifier, their given name, family name, email, department, and location. However, however we don't want all of that information, right? Um, so if we go back in here, you can see that all I've asked 
from Emma, from her employee credential as her given name, her family name, and the department that she works in, because um, we are quite interested in that, because um, if we look at the employment credential, you can see that she works in telecommunications and high-speed telecom would like to trust an employee that works in the telecommunications department. So I've gone in and requested that information as well. Now, the next thing you want to do is set up your list of trusted issuers, and you can specify an array of issuers over here. Um, so this is essentially, I've gone in and I've put in the dead of the um, issuer that uh, that is field services. Um, so that's also from the credential issuer. Um, that's the issuer did. So this issuer did is from, um, it can come from other tenants, and for us it has come from field services as tenant. Um, you might need to obtain this dead somehow, but for me, because I'm the one who's, who has created this entire demo, I've already got the issuer did over here. So I've gone ahead and put that as my trusted issuer over here. Now you can set um, trusted issuers to be required. Um, so if you set this required to false, it might loosely want you to uh, to send a credential from this issuer, but it'll, the presentation will still go through if um, the credential isn't issued by the issuers that you've listed in your um, trusted issuers array. Now the required field that is outside of this trusted issuer um, block over here is asking about the credential in a whole, right? You can have, you can request optional uh, you, in your presentation request, you can have optional credentials, so you can do without that credential if the um, mobile wallet holder doesn't want to disclose that credential. But for us, we do want the employee credential, so I've gone ahead and put required true for that. Cool. Now, that's the employee credential, but I've also gone ahead and done the same thing for the fall prediction um, credential. I won't go through this, because it's exactly the same setup. You can pause the video and look at the definition if you'd like to do that. Cool, so I'm going to go ahead and press send and this is going to create me my presentation template and give me back an ID. All right, so with the presentation template set up, you can go in and on MatterLearn you can see that we have multiple ways of verifying a credential. You can verify using the API if you already have a credential or you can verify using a callback URL if you don't want to use the OIDC bridge extension. However, the easiest way is to set up an OIDC verifier and be able to do that um, verification. So I'm not going to walk you through exactly how to set up an OIDC verifier. To be able to do that, you can look at the documentation on Learn. However, I am going to walk you through the two APIs that you need to hit in order to create um, your verifier. The first one is um, slash v1 slash verifiers, and we want to put in our verifier did as well as our template um, ID that we from the template that we just created. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that and paste that over here. Now this verifier did needs to be a non BLS um, did. So you can just go ahead and create that on your um, create dids endpoint just by passing in method key or method um, whatever did web or anything. Now creating a verifier also asks you for a verifier did and you can easily create that using the dids endpoint. I've already done that and I've added my did over here. The next thing that we need to do is set up all our claim mappings and this is in the reverse role from when we were setting up the issuer where you needed to map what was coming from the ID token to um, the JSON LD function name, a fully qualified name. However, in this case, we are going from the fully qualified name from the credential back into an OIDC claim, and then our platform is going to condense that into an ID token and send it to whoever is using this OIDC uh, verifier client. So what I've gone in and I've set up, I, I've gone in and set up all of my claim mappings over here. And once you've gone and done that, you just want to press send. All right, so we've successfully created our verifier and now we need to configure a verifier client. I won't go in and do that because that is very specific to how your web application is set up. But if you want to find details, you can go to learn.matter.global and under tutorials, um, under verifying using OIDC bridge, you can look at the configure a client um, page and you can find all the step-by-step -step instructions on how to set up a verifier client if you want to.
Cool, so I've already gone ahead and created myself a Verify client and hooked it up with my web application over here. Um, and this is essentially the high speed, this is supposed to be the high speed telecom um, portal where Emma has already logged in and she needs access to the Jacksonville Point site. Now to access uh, the site, she needs to provide her employee credentials and her fall prediction training um, credential. And when she presses claim access, what this is gonna do is call that verifier client and essentially start the authentication process. So if I click that, this is gonna use our presentation template to generate a presentation request and present it in the form of a QR code. And what I can do now is I, if I bring my wallet up here, I can go in into the scan page and scan that QR code. And you can see that it's asked me for the following information, my employee credential and my fall prediction training credential. If we press view on the employee credential, you're gonna be able to see once it's done preparing a list of claims that it's only asked for the information that we defined in our presentation template, which was the name, the family name, and the department that she worked in. And it's not going to disclose the identifier, the email, and the location. And it's doing the same thing for the um, training certificate. However, in the case of the training certificate, I've gone ahead and asked for all the information because it's relevant um, to me as High Speed Telecom. So we just can go ahead and press send. And this is going to create a presentation and send it through to our platform, which is going to verify that information and send it back to this web app that I have created locally on my desktop. If I just get rid of my mobile wallet now, um, you can see over here, I've gone ahead and displayed the information that we received in a much more um, easily viewable way. However, the information that you get, if I just go into inspect, you're gonna get back an ID token. So in here, in our message, you can see that we get back an, um, uh, we get back an ID token and in our profile, you can see all the information that we've received back and I've just gone in and I've displayed them um, quite nicely over here. So you can see that we have our employee information that we requested for, which is the name and the department that Emma worked in, as well as the full protection training credential claims, which was the name, the training level, instructor, date of assessment, and valid until. Now from here, what High Speed Telecom can do is go ahead and issue Emma another credential for her access into Jacksonville Point site. Um, and you can do that using techniques like um, secure dead messaging or essentially the same issuance that I showed earlier in the video using a QR code. All right, and that's it for this demo. If you'd like to try out any of these capabilities on your own, it is very easy. You can head on over to meta.global to sign up for a free tenant for yourself. For any further support, you can reach us on Meta Support or contact us via email. That's it for me. Thank you for watching.